Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be comparing decimals. We are in our home links, uh, Unit 3, Lesson 13. Hey, this is the last lesson of the unit, which means there's going to be a unit test coming up soon in your future. Uh, before we get started on the problems, take a look at this uh, box up at the top where it says Family Note. It actually offers some uh, useful advice. You know, I, I know that kids will sometimes will just skim through the directions, all the wordy parts at the top, and they'll just jump right into the numeric problems. But sometimes uh, the directions are very useful to read. It says, ask your child to read the decimal numerals out loud. Encourage your child to use the following method. Read the whole number part. Say and for the decimal point. Read the digits after the decimal point as though they form their own number. Say tenths and or hundredths, depending on the placement of the right-hand digit. And encourage your child to exaggerate the sound like I just did. For example, two and thirty-seven hundredths is read as two and thirty-seven hundredths. So, let's take a look at these problems down at the bottom. We are comparing two amounts that are... Uh, involving decimal points. So let's do what they said to do in uh, the family note. So comparing greater than, less than, or equal to, number one, two and thirty-five hundredths compared to two and fifty-seven hundredths. So by just saying them aloud, I start to hear some clues as to which one might be bigger. Two and thirty Five hundredths versus two and fifty seven hundredths. Okay, obviously fifty is bigger than thirty. So I would say that this number is bigger. So I would read this inequality as two and thirty five hundredths is less than two and fifty seven hundredths. Okay. Now another approach we could use when you have a inequality is to rewrite that problem vertically up and down. So you just put those two numbers on top of each other. 2 and 35 hundredths and 2 and 57 hundredths. And by doing that, that allows uh, the viewer to see the decimals lined up and the place values lined up. So when I look at this number right here in the tenths section, I see that 5 is bigger than 3. Now, I also see that 5 is smaller than 7 in the hundredths, but as soon as I recognize that I have more tenths in 2 and 57 hundredths, I know that one's the bigger one. Okay, So lining them up vertically can be very helpful. Let's try another problem. Uh, I'm going to skip down to number 5, 42 and 1 tenth versus 42 and 9 hundredths, okay? Now again, 42 and a tenth has no hundredths value, and that is because we can assume the value is 0. So I'm going to just throw in a 0 there as a place value holder, Okay. And again, when I compare those two numbers on top of each other, 42 and 1 tenth, or 10 hundredths, compared to 42 and 9 hundredths, you can see that 10 hundredths is bigger than 9. So that would make this amount bigger. So I would read that inequality as 42 and 1 tenth, or 42 and 10 hundredths, is greater than 42 and 9 hundredths. See how that works? So try to complete the rest of those uh, number sentences, figuring out the whether or not they're inequalities or if they are equal to each other. Now, for number 9 and 10, uh, they ask you to point out the value of an individual place value. Um, we did that in Unit 1, except now we're dealing with decimals. So for example, uh, the 9 and 4 and 59 hundredths stands for 9, well, I just said it, hundredths. Say, 
in words aloud when I'm drawing a problem can sometime help us out. So nine hundredths, there's more than one, so let's make it plural, Mr. Wasman. Or I can just write it out as 0 0.09, like so. That's all you have to do there. And then here, uh, numbers 11 and 12, I am uh, continuing a pattern. Now if I look really closely at the first three numbers, and number, what is that, 11? I see that the only thing changing is the hundredths place value. So 6 and 56 hundredths. 6 and 57 hundredths, 6 and 58 hundredths, 6 and 50, well, I bet you can figure it out. So, what comes next? 1, 2, 3 more numbers, okay? So what comes after 58, all right? Now for number 12, as you can see, we still have decimal numerals, but the only thing that's changing here is the tenths. 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths, and so on. So another way of thinking about it is I'm skip counting by tens. 73 hundredths, 83 hundredths, 93 hundredths. Well, what comes after 90? Well, that would be 100, okay? So if I had 93 hundredths, my next number would be 103 hundredths, like so. Now, the temptation right now is to do this, 0 0.103, because what comes after 9? That's 10. But when you have a hundred hundredths, that's the same as saying one whole, okay? So the decimal point is not going to go here to the left of the one. No, no, no. It's going to go to the right like so. So let's look at that uh, uh, pattern again. 73 hundredths, 83 hundredths, 93 hundredths, 103 hundredths, otherwise known as 1 and 3 hundredths. So I've increased my value, a place value, and that pushed my number of hundredths into the whole number realm to the left of that decimal. So then what would come after one and three hundredths if I'm skip counting by tenths? I bet you can figure it out. Now, it says write the number that is one tenth more. Okay. Um, that sounds an awful lot like an addition problem. So again, when I add, I want to add with my numbers vertically aligned. So all I'm doing here is adding 4 and 3 tenths plus a tenth. If I squint my eyes for just a second, I can ignore the uh, decimal points, and I can just tell myself, what's 43 plus 1? Well, that would be 44. And 4 and 3 tenths plus 1 tenth would give me 4 and 4 tenths. So basically all I did here is I added 43 plus 1, but the decimal points made the value different, okay? I could think of it as adding 43 tenths plus 1 tenth gives me 44 tenths. And another way of saying 44 tenths is, of course, 4 and 4 tenths, okay? Then finally, we've got some big number addition and subtraction problems. Uh, I figured we'd do at least one. Number 20 looks good. 82,004 minus 11,534. So again, I'm going to line these numbers up vertically. And as I do, you can see that, oh, there's going to be some regrouping involved. But not right away. 4 minus 4 gives me 0, so I'm good there. I don't have to do any regrouping with that one. But when I look at the tens, I see that I have no tens, and I need at least three tens to subtract. So I go to the hundreds, and I have no hundreds either. So I have to go all the way to the thousands. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to borrow from the thousands. I'm going to leave the ten thousands alone, because I have what I need over here. 
So I make 2,000 into 1,000, and I take my 10 hundreds, and I make it into 10 hundreds here. And then I'm going to borrow one of those hundreds, leaving 900 in its place. And I'm going to make 10, 100 into 10 tens. Okay. So again, when I'm uh, renaming a number, eight, like 82,004, if I change it into 80,000, and then 1,000, and then 900, and then 100, and then 4, if I add those five numbers that I broke down into expanded form, I would get my original number 82,004. So we're in good shape. So now all we have to do is finish subtracting. 10 minus 3 is going to give me 7. 9 minus 5 gives me 4. 1 minus 1 is nothing. And 8 minus 1 is 7. So my difference is 70,470. And again, if I wanted to make sure if that answer was correct, I would just take 70,000. 470 and 11,534 and I would add those two together. Now boys and girls, I don't know if you've ever noticed that sometimes up in the margins of the top of the instructions uh, they will have a little symbol that has a calculator uh, icon with a cross through it saying no calculators. Okay, Now if there's an icon that says no calculators, it says don't use calculators. However, for our purposes, if you wanted to uh, prove your answer to be right and add these together using a calculator to save yourself a minute or two, that would be totally acceptable. What would not be acceptable is just using the calculator to solve the subtraction problem because it wouldn't teach you anything. But I don't need a calculator to show you that 70,470 plus 11,534 would give me my original number, uh, 82,004, because I can do the calculations myself. Okay, we covered a lot here today, which makes sense because we are at the end of our unit, and I want to make sure that you are well prepared for the test, whatever form that takes. If you have questions about any of these concepts, please reach out to your math teacher. They are there to help. Otherwise, I will talk to you again, probably discussing Unit 4. So good luck on that test, and we will talk again soon, friends. Thanks.